Kia ora tātou, i rau te te manaa ki tango, te tātou ariki, matua tama wairau tapu ngāne he rupono i te maanga hei tau tuko mai, ai nei, ake nei, ai. Marama tanga, uh, in a long minute, and so we're in the single digits now, whānau, not too long to go, uh, we are counting eight days away, so today is the official eighth day away from the um, 8th of November, um, so we're nearly there whānau. And this journey is closely coming to an end. And as I talked in the previous video last night, one of the things that we really want to start looking at is um, the completion of the remaining mahi left to be uh, that has been left behind by Taupo Tiki Muratana. As we know, and I've said it in several other videos several times, Ratana said uh, on 1928. Ko oti ngā mahi o te aripa, e tūnei tō hāhi uh, me ngā pau me te, me te teme para tapu. And so 1928 he declared that the mahi of the Ture Wairua ko oti. And so here we are now trying to identify and articulate the remaining mahi which is the Ture Tangata, ngā mahi o te omika. And what sits under that mahi is te tiri te o Waitangi and Te manu mo te haki mo tātou tiwi Māori. And so, as we get into this conversation, it's important to understand that Taupo Tiki Wurumu Rātana was a connector. And so, as a Puroputi Māori, his job of connecting us uh, to the rangi and also to the whenua, which is why we say sometimes in our whakamoemiti, uh, ke a uh, te Māori me te mana, Kei te rangi tōna uh, torona, kei te whenua tōna tūranga waiwai. And so in that, we acknowledge that Taupo Tiki Urumuratana, ai, he was a connector. So in the mahi of the Ture Wairua, he connected us back to Iho Ngamano. He enabled us to have a, a, di a direct, um, untouched link with Iho. And so the second part, the mahi of Te Omika, was about us having a direct and untouched association and full sovereignty over the whenua. Now this is the big thing that Taupo Tiki Muratana had tried to achieve in his time. Um, we'll probably go a little bit deeper into that in other videos and I'll probably bring a few other people on so we can start to articulate this kōrero a little bit more. But some of us might know about the 1932 petition that Taupo Tiki Muratana floated around the motu. And in that petition, he was able to gain over 75% of the total Māori population at the time to give him confidence to be the sole um, mediator on behalf of Tato Te Māori and the Crown. And so within the 1932 um, petition, I, over 75% of the Māori people uh, signed it uh, at that time and pretty much those who signed it pretty much gave Taupo Tiki Muratana the authority to be their speaking voice in terms of our sovereignty over the over the whenua and so this is what Ratana had tried to achieve Taupo Tiki Muratana wanted to go for one single claim over the whole of Aotearoa and when you look at the situation now, a lot of our iwi have gone in their own directions to seek um, settlement, a settlement process. And in that settlement process, majority of our iwi have only experienced 1-2% to 2 of a return in the total um, value of loss that they've uh, faced. And so in this conversation... We'll break it up into a, a couple of days, but this is, I guess, how huge this conversation is, that Ratana had the confidence of over 75% of the Māori population to go for one single claim over the whole of Aotearoa. Not just, not just one iwi go for this part, one iwi gets that slice, one single claim for Tato Te Iwi Māori. And so I want to reiterate some of the kōrero that I've spoken of in terms of Tuputanga Kawa. Now, Tuputanga Kawa, he was the kingmaker in his time. And he came to Ratana in December 1920. 
um, wanting to seek an audience with Ratana as word started to get out that there was this miracle man, this man who was prophesied by all the old Māori prophets, he had arrived. And so Tupu Tangakaua was very excited to build a relationship with Topo Tikiwur and Muratana. And so he came to Ratana Pa, 1920, in December. And his intentions were made very clear to Topo Tikiwur and Muratana. He said to Ratana, um, I hear that you have the ability to heal the body and the spirit. But today I have not come here for the healing of the body, nor have I come here for the healing of the spirit. I have come here for the healing of the whenua. And so the Maui we on on is where all that kōrero comes from. But Tiputanga Kawa, the kingmaker of the Kingitanga movement, uh, made a special hikoi to Ratana Pa to lay down that kaupapa. And in that kōrero, Ratana responded, I, uh, Tiputanga Kawa, uh, the challenge that you've laid before us is a very important one. But let me tell you this. First, we must go back to our people and unite them under Ihua. And so, this is what brings me to the kōrero tonight. And if you're lucky, you might be able to see the banner. There's a couple of banners in the Rangimari room within the, manu, uh, within the manual. So, take some time to go and check out those banners because they hold a lot of important kōrero. And I don't know if it's up there still. There's actually quite a few banners that have been taken out of the um, manual for, um, I guess, pr protection reasons. They're getting pretty old. But in one of the banners uh, that Ratana used to help articulate uh, the mahi of the Ture Tangata, he actually had a couple of verses there. And one of the verses comes from uh, the book of Matthew. Uh, chapter 6 verse 33 so basically what the Kōrero says in that verse um, the Tama is speaking to the people then and he basically says this do not worry about what to wear what to drink or what to eat Iho knows everything that you require before you even ask him but first seek the kingdom and his righteousness and everything that you desire will be given to you and so when Ratana was on this mission of returning the Fenua, this is the kupu that he used. First seek the kingdom and his righteousness, and everything that you so desire shall be given to you. And now Ratana was able to articulate this understanding on an individual level. And so when Ratana, in several places that he went, he was able to articulate what can happen, the potential of bringing yourself into the kingdom and locating yourself in Ihor's kingdom and getting right or seeking righteousness in terms of his kopapa, his tūri. And so people were asked, e ana koe ki te matua, te tama, te tapu. And when they answered yes, those people would be healed. And so in the affirming of their whakapono to the matua, tama, wairua tapu, iho ngā mano, they were actually locating themselves into the kingdom. And through doing so, they were seeking his righteousness. And so this is all important, kōrero, that if we are very serious about wanting our whenua back, then one of the things that we need to be serious about is finding unity. Not just unity, but unity under iho ngā mano, the sovereign creator of all those things who do, that do exist. Under him, we must locate ourselves and so that's what this kupu is telling us first seek the kingdom and his righteousness locate yourself in his kingdom find yourself under his mantle under his today and through that you will see that all these things that you wish and hope for will be given to you and so this is the challenge that we're left with Fano. the question is how do we unite our maori people in this day and age um, he was able to do something um, that not many people were able to do. He was able to win the confidence of over 75% of our Māori people. And bearing in mind that we are in the thick of colonization at the time, bearing in mind also that our people were still fresh from fighting with each other. So all of these things we've got to take into consideration. We don't have those challenges 
right now, but the challenges that we do have, I guess, uh, urbanization, colonization is still um, a big issue, uh, but we do have a huge identity issue, and that we've actually lost our identity under Ihoa, and we've actually lost our identity as our people. And so what I, what I mean by that is that if we truly valued ourselves, then we would not have ever settled in any of our settlements a 1% to 2% claim, a 2% return on what we were actually worth. Um, so how do you unite a people like that uh, who love fighting against each other? And how do you encourage such a, a beaten and defeated people uh, to find their own self-confidence and their own identity. Um, so these are some of the questions that we ask Fano, um, as we go cl get closer and closer to the 8th of November. Uh, the challenge is actually identifying what's going to happen on the 9th of November, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th. It's all good to have a party and we are going to have a party. Um, but let's think about what's going to happen the day after the 8th of November. So, Nore Nai Te Iwi, um, bit of a longer session tonight, um, and probably that's going to be the case over the next couple of nights. But let's start drumming this down, Fano. What are we going to be doing on the 9th of November? Um, so, I'll leave that corridor there for now, and hopefully that's stimulated some thinking for us. Hopefully that's um, left us with something positive to think about. So, Nore Nai um, Nga mana ki tanga o i hoa ngā mano ki rungi a tātou katoa. Matua tama wairua tapu anehera pono i te māngai tautoko mai ae nei ake nei ae. Kia ora tātou.